All right, guys, welcome to part two of the chessboard demo. So ideally, you've moved several pieces onto this board from the other picture, and maybe you've tweaked the white pieces to match the white piece that's on the board. This is an unaltered piece here, and I'm going to show you how to make it into a black piece. So to make a piece look like a black piece, I'm going to go to Adjust. I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. And the saturation controls the vibrancy of the color. More saturation is more color. Less saturation is less color. And I want to make it black and white, or grayscale, as they call it. So I've desaturated and hit Apply. Now I'm going to go to Adjustments again, and I'm going to hit Exposure. I'm sorry. I'm going to hit Levels. You could probably do it with Exposure. There's a lot of adjustments that are very similar, but I like to use this. I get the piece pretty dark with the black slider. Sometimes I use the gray slider to just kind of find my happy spot. I do not want pure black. That doesn't look real at all. A lot of times when I do this, I write down my numbers, 126, 1.5. I know 255, I didn't change that one. Uh, but that way I can make all the pieces that I want to be black match each other if those numbers are the same. Apply. Now, I have my knight here. Maybe I don't even want this knight in the same area, or maybe I want to make it flip him. There's a couple things you can do. If you go to Edit and Transform, I could flip him horizontally, and now he looks the other way. Um, that maybe helps make it seem a little bit more like I didn't copy him. If I'm sliding him further back on the board, I may want to shrink him just a little bit to add a little perspective. Now, the next, the final step, right? I have a bunch of white pieces and a bunch of black pieces on here. I need to make them look like they're really here. This piece has a reflection. Some boards will actually have a shadow. Some boards will have a reflection. Kind of depends on the angle you take the picture. If I'm doing just a shadow, I like to use this Dodge and Burn tool. It's a like a half circle, light and dark. I have a lighten and a darken option. I would want to darken it. I get a brush size that I feel like is usually, I usually go with kind of the size of the head there. I need to be on the bottom layer. So I'm going to look over here. And yes, I'm on the bottom layer. And I just kind of draw. A little bit on the board. You can actually use highlights if you need to because this is a light spot on the board. And you can just kind of create a shadow. Now, I always recommend zooming out um, after you do it because when you're zoomed in, you can't really tell what it looks like. Oops, view, fit screen. I don't know. That one's not great, but this board doesn't need shadows. It needs reflections, so it's never going to look good. Um, if you see a dark spot, then you're trying to replicate that. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. Also, usually if I try and draw shadows with that tool, I like to actually duplicate this bottom layer. Just so that way, if I mess it up and it looks terrible, I can just delete that whole layer and not have to undo it a million times. Um, but now I'm going to show you reflections because that's what this particular photo needs. So I actually duplicate this layer. That knight is on top of the other one. I'm going to spin it around. Now, you notice it's facing the wrong way. I need to go to Edit transform. I need to flip it horizontally. Okay. I also need it to be behind this knight. So I pick up the layer here and I drag it down and drop it in there. It's now behind it and you might have noticed the difference right in here. The next thing I'm going to do here at the layer is I'm going to click on this snowman menu and turn the transparency down. I want it to be much less noticeable. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on this piece.
the wow I could probably make that way less transparent oh I did it undo my transparency I guess I didn't save that there we go I made that much more transparent I will probably come in here with an eraser I like to use a pretty big one with a very fuzzy edge so this like third row maybe a hundred and I kind of come close and I just start fading it out I don't I don't want the reflection to have a lot of detail to it I just want it to be there that there's something there the other tool you could use is the smudge tool which is part of this water drop smudge um, I like this better in Photoshop than in Pixlr. Look, it's like, it gets too jagged of edge going on. So I'd, normally I would use that. Maybe the blur would work. I just don't like it in, in Pixlr, the way it, it reacts. Uh, so I'm actually going to come back here with the eraser. I'm trying to get rid of that dark edge. That's what I was trying to get rid of. And now when I zoom out, view... Fit screen. There's a little hint that there's a reflection there, kind of like there's a little hint there. I think it looks decent. Um, you know, the whole goal is that at a glance, nobody notices that this is a Photoshop. So, again, I'm going to duplicate layer. I'm going to go to edit, transform, flip vertically. Ah, see, by doing that, I didn't have to transform it twice. Interesting. Switch the order, layer the orders. Snowman menu for a transparency. With a dark piece, I'm going to make it extra transparent because um, it, I just think that you don't want to see, like, dark lines there. And again, I kind of personally like to break up the the reflection a little bit with the with the eraser fuzzy edge you know I've got that big brush and just come close to it just kind of is a little bit just makes it extra transparent in a few spots and I think that helps it seem more natural all right view fit screen if it's the end of the period and I need to save this for tomorrow. File. Save. Save it as a PXD. Give it a title, like my, you know, Jones sample. Uh, and save that to your computer as a backup. If it's all done, you could actually crop off the other half of this and save it as a JPEG for submitting it. 